Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Let's seek the truth and travel the long road to justice together. Well, what you know, alibiers, welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Good to have you here. Had to redo this opening because at first I said, hope you're having a good Tuesday till I looked in the corner and saw it's Wednesday. So now that I'm with it, we are going to jump back into some wiretaps. But first, I want to tell you that starting today, I'm going to be covering the Adam Montgomery trial. He is on trial for second degree murder in the death of his daughter, Harmony Montgomery, among other charges. Very, very disturbing case. But started covering this when the news hit that she was missing, had been missing for quite a while, just slipped through the cracks of the child protection services and, and really just everybody. The details are not pleasant, but her story deserves to be told. If you are new to the podcast and you're not familiar how I do when I cover trials, whether I'm at the trial itself or watching from home, I take eight hours of testimony and kind of condense it down into one hour so that you're getting the meat of the testimony without all the extras, the objections, the sidebars, the breaks, everything. Some people don't like to watch cases like this, completely understandable. Some people work and don't have time to watch, so that way you're getting all you need in one hour every day that the trial's going on. So follow along if you like. It's about time that we see justice. By the way, Harmony's body's never been discovered. Moving along, if you're watching on YouTube, you know the drill. Hit subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. If you want notifications, hit the bell button. It'll alert your phone or your device every time I upload new content. Music fact of the day, the song Closing Time by Semisonic. And most people assume this is a song about a bar closing at the end of the night. The bartender's telling everybody to get out. As it turns out, this song is actually about a baby being born. Singer Dan Wilson wrote this song for his daughter who was born at three months prematurely. And he wanted to keep the lyrics ambiguous because he thought his bandmates would get annoyed playing a song about a baby. He said millions and millions of people bought the song and heard the song and didn't get it. He said they think it's about being bounced from a bar, but it's about being bounced from the womb. It's a great song. Anyway, you hear it. One thing from the last episode I didn't make clear, Michael Weinstein is a longtime friend of the Adelsons who is also a criminal defense attorney. He has been very vocal supporting the Adelsons and saying that they're good people. He was on 2020. I've seen him on other stuff. So I didn't make that clear. wanted to throw that in. That was the last call where Donna sounded very urgent talking to Charlie. But we're going to move on. The next call in this is between Katie and Sigfredo. This is May 29th of 2016, so four days after Sigfredo was arrested, and he calls Katie from jail. They say their hellos. She says she's thinking about him. He tells her that visitation is on TVs and not in person. Katie tells Sigfredo that her brother is going to come early in the morning. Sigfredo asks what he wants. Katie says nothing. He just wants to see you. Katie tells Sigfredo she can't because she'll break down. He tells her that everybody can see the visitation and he doesn't want her to. She tells him the times for visitation. She wrote those times down. She says she's trying to document everything she can. Sigfredo says something that I couldn't understand and Katie says to think positive. She tells him they went to church that day and just to think positive. She says, I don't even know. I've read everything everywhere and I'm so confused about everything. So I'm trying to organize everything. Sigfredo asked about their children and if they're asleep. She said the kids are good. They're watching a movie. She said she's had overload that day. She asked how that day was for him and asked if he ate early. He says, yeah. She asked him, why do you eat so early? And he says, I don't know. We ate breakfast at four in the morning. Katie says, what? He says, yeah, they wake us up to eat breakfast in the morning. Then we eat lunch at 10 in the morning. And then we eat again at four. So from four to four, I'm starving. I ordered some food in case I'm sitting in here on Wednesday. He also said he ordered some underwear and stuff. Katie says, yeah, because you have money. He said he asked for a jumper. They gave him a 5XL size. She asked why they didn't give him the right size, and he said the officers don't want to do crap. She asked him if they're jerks, and he says, yeah. Katie asked if it's small or big where he's staying, and he said there are 12 cells inside of a little box, and then there's 24 guys in there two people per cell. He said they gave him a roommate. He calls him a crackhead homeless guy who's 27. He said the guy got into a fight in another cell. She asked Sigfredo if they're segregated by race, and he said no. He said it's a little rough. She asked about when her brother comes to visit and how that works. 
Sigfredo said her brother will be downstairs and where Sigfredo is talking from, there's two TVs beside it where Sigfredo can see who's visiting him. Katie tells him not to worry about us. We're all good. She said she needs to go speak with him, meaning the lawyer. Katie says that the lawyer has gone out of town to go do something. Sigfredo says, I want to understand because he's taking it easy. He said they'll probably drop it to a smaller charge so that he'll get bond. But I'm like, I want you to understand they have no case, so I don't want to be sitting here forever. Katie interrupts and says, yeah, that's what I've told him. He knows. I'm like, this is my whole family. You're a freaking father. What the heck are they doing? Uh, Katie, committing murder has consequences. Katie says this lawyer is very good. Sigfredo says, try not to give him money. You're going to give him money tomorrow? Katie says, no. He says, we'll give him money after we know what happened up there. Katie says there's paperwork he has to prepare, and she's already given him money. Sigfredo said the attorney told him it would take two grand to cover the attorney going up there for the initial hearings. After that, if he takes the case, it'll be 50 grand or more. And Sigfredo says what attorneys will do is they'll stretch this out. And Katie says, of course, it's all about the money. Sigfredo says, I'm going to be all the way up there and he's going to be down here and he doesn't want any drama. Katie said, that's BS. He can't be telling me all this stuff. He told me he has family over there, so he's not wasting money on hotels or whatever. Sigfredo says they'll stretch it out because the courts will come in three months at a time. He says once he gets to Tallahassee, he'll see a judge. And then they've got 32 days to set the charges. Sigfredo says if he doesn't get me out within 32 days, they're going to set me off for another three or four months from now. She asked if they can skip the first arraignment and just go straight to the bond hearing. Sigfredo says no. She says so within 33 days, he has to get all the paperwork and everything situated. Sigfredo says that would be on the 24th. They have 33 days from the 24th to press charges, but they can always drop the charge down to second degree and then give him bond. Katie says, I know there's going to be something ridiculous. They're making everything ridiculous as it is already. She asked if 33 days from when you got charged is the 24th because she said they didn't put you into the system until the 25th. Katie says, so by June 25th, he needs to have this taken care of. Sigfredo says, right. Sigfredo says, if they don't charge me by the 25th, they've got to release me. Oh, it's coming, Sigfredo. Katie says, a bond to be released. And Sigfredo says, no. If they don't charge me by the 25th, they have to drop all the charges. So, of course, Katie says, let's pray for that. Sigfredo says, yeah, pray for that. I just don't want them to take their time because he said, if I'm guilty, he's like, we're going to stretch this out to get the best. Couldn't tell what he said there. And I'm like, no, I'm not guilty. I want this taken care of quickly. They better show a probable cause. They're making a show of this crap. He said, let's not talk about that. She says, I know we can only do one day at a time. He asked about the kids again, and she doesn't want them to hear anything. She said, they're going to be like, what's that? She said, I don't know what they saw. He asked if she's in the house, and she says, no, she's scared to be alone. Sigfredo said he doesn't want her to be alone. She also says they found a potential person to take Thunder, who I think is a pet, a dog. She said just temporarily. She says she can't handle that right now. It's just too much. She said, and with the kids at school, with all the crap they're doing, they don't understand this is a family and you guys are crapping on the kids. She said something about the parents that attend the functions. I'm not really sure where she was going with this. If It sounds like maybe her kid was in a, a private school because she talked to Charlie about how much it cost for this kid to go there. So I don't know what happened maybe with the arrest, if it got a little awkward or if they said something to her. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Sigfredo tells her he's sorry. Katie said there's nothing to be sorry about. We don't believe in the system, and the system has to serve correctly. She said, this is wrong. She said, school's almost over. I got to speak to schools, then go to the school probably Tuesday so I can get that taken care of. She said her goal is for the kids not to be in this. She says she loves him. He says he loves her back. He says to tell the kids that he loves them and also to tell their child happy birthday for him. She tells him everything's going to be okay. She asked if everyone's about to go to sleep soon, and he says he can't sleep. She says, I know. And then she asked if there is a certain time you have to be inside somewhere. He said they're currently watching a movie on the Spanish channel. She asked if everybody gets to watch together. He said, yeah, everybody's sitting about 10 to 15 feet away. There's a maximum of 24 inmates where he's being housed, and everybody in there is facing life 
has got life or has been in there for a very long time. She says, isn't that the county jail? He says, yeah, but they separate us from everybody. So everybody I'm with has serious charges and is facing life. And Katie says, that's not right. They're putting your life in danger. WTF? She asked what he gets to eat. He said they called it chicken chow mein, but it was more like rice with vomit. She asked if he can use his commissary money yet. He says, I don't know about the food. That doesn't come until Wednesday. I don't know if I'm going to be in here till Wednesday. He said he just put the order in. And if he doesn't get the food, just send the money wherever I go. Katie says that his hearing for possession, that possession of cocaine, is Tuesday. And then she makes a comment about how the phone sucks. It's staticky. He says he loves her. And of course, she loves him too. He says to kiss the kids and tell the kids that he loves them. And he'll try to say happy birthday to their daughter tomorrow. She asked if he'll call in the morning. And he says yes. She says to try to call both morning and night. That call ends. It's amazing. I mean, just playing the victim on a man who very coldly walked up to Dan Markell and shot him in his driveway. It sounds like he's in the appropriate place in that jail. Charlie decides to subscribe to this jet service. And it kind of reminds me of like an Uber or Lyft for charter jets. And the guy's walking him through how to set up his account. Charlie asked the man if the 1500 credit will show up. The agent instructs Charlie to close the app, reopen it, and it should be there. Then Charlie asks what those flight credits allow him to do. The agent says he could charter a flight through them, purchase an extra seat, but you can't use those credits towards anything like catering or cancellation fees, but you can use it as far as anything having to do with flying. Charlie talks about if he were to cancel, he gets charged $1,000. The agent says if you book it and cancel within 72 hours of departure, it's $1,000. Anything from three days to one week is a $250 cancellation fee. Two weeks out is $100. Anything past two weeks is free to cancel. Charlie asks if he can book two flights at the same time, and the agent says yes. You have two tickets on these shuttles. Anything under four hours is one ticket. Anything over four hours will take both tickets to go one way. Charlie asks, how do I know I'm getting back? The agent says, as soon as the jet leaves, let's say at 6 p.m., as soon as that time hits, you'll get those two tickets right back to you. Charlie asks how long of a flight it is from Fort Lauderdale to Las Vegas. The agent said, that's over four hours, so it's going to take two of those tickets. Charlie says, hypothetically, if I fly out on Friday, I have to fly back on Sunday. If I use my two legs up, is there a chance the flight on Sunday is packed and then I'm stranded and I have to fly commercial? God forbid. The agent says that's right. He says it's likely the flight is going to be sold out. He said there's a very small chance that somebody cancels. It's not common, but sometimes extra seats do pop up. You can pay the extra fee to lock in the full round trip. Charlie says, so if I fly out to Vegas, I might be stranded. The agent said it's not like you're stranded. He says this isn't the only travel solution. It's a great supplemental tool. He said, you have to fit in with our schedule. And they go back and forth about this for a while. I won't bore you with the details. I bet Charlie's wishing he had chartered him a flight to Vietnam. The next call is between Katie and Jim Lewis. This was Sigfredo's lawyer during this time frame. He asked how she's doing. She says she's holding on. She asked if he's back in town. He says, yes. She wants to know if he's going to be in the office. And he says that he's there now and asked if something new came up. She said, no. I was just thinking if you knew something new. He said the lawyer that he knows is talking to Charlie and they're having conversations and Charlie is not going to be talking to any police or anything like that. Katie asked if they've said anything about her. He said at about 9 p.m. last night, the detective from Tallahassee called him and asked if he knew what Katie was going to do, such as is Katie going to cooperate? He said that the investigator said that they know a lot more than Katie thinks they know, and she better cooperate. Now's the time before she has to go to jail. And Katie starts to say something, but y'all, when it registers that he just said, in case Katie has to go to jail, Katie says, what did they say? He says they want you to cooperate now. In other words, they're pressing you. They're squeezing you to try to come up with information to help yourself. In other words, they're grasping at stuff. They don't know what the situation is. And Katie says, but they said, if I don't do that, I'm going to jail. He says, they didn't say it. They insinuated it. He's just checking to see what you're of mind to do. Katie says, I'm trying to do my own little research, trying to backtrack everything. Remember, 
On the last episode, she called Sprint, trying to find out if she could get text messages from two years ago. He tells her, don't go back talking to people. That's not good. I don't want you talking to anybody and stuff like that, okay? She asked if he'll be in the office all day, and he says no. She asks what time he's going to be in the office until, and he says, it's got to be around lunchtime, isn't it? And Katie says, yeah, it's actually my daughter's birthday. He said, if you want to give me a specific time this afternoon, that he would come back after lunch. Katie says, I guess once we cut the little cake, he tells her to go do what you got to do. He said he lives five minutes from the office. And if she needs to see him that afternoon for any reason, just call and let him know. He also tells Katie he has a hearing tomorrow with Sigfredo. Katie says she doesn't watch the news or anything, but it feels like they're saying something else, something different from the thing. The attorney interrupts and says that they're not saying anything different. They're saying they want you to cooperate and they consider now the time. Katie says no, but they dropped the thing on Friday and he was supposed to be transported. Doesn't he have a hearing on Tuesday? The attorney says, yes, that's what's keeping Sigfredo in Miami. Katie says, well, how come they said it was Friday that he was being transported? The attorney says, no, they were looking to transport him, but I scheduled the hearing. He objected to them releasing him on recognizance. This is for the cocaine charge with a promise to return for future court hearings, but clearly he's going to be extradited to Tallahassee and would not make it back down for the cocaine. That was actually dropped at some point pretty soon after he was arrested anyway. The attorney says that he's going to be on his way up there by Wednesday or Thursday, no doubt about that. He said the cop was vague about when he's coming to get Sigfredo. He says, you're obviously the person they want to talk to that they think they can get the most information out of. They don't really know who to approach in that family, but at least now that family kind of knows what's going on. And you and I know at least Charlie won't be talking to them. So that's about all. The attorney tells Katie he'll continue working on contacting the Hollandale police to see when Katie interrupts and said she was going to ask about when they will release that. I'm thinking they're talking about Sigfredo's wallet at this point. He says he needs to call on Tuesday to see what hoops they're going to make him go through to release that stuff to Katie. She asks how she can get access to Sigfredo's bank account. He says he'll speak with Sigfredo tomorrow because he'll see him for court. Then he says you can come to court tomorrow to see him. And she says, I don't think he wants, I think it's just too much. Everything's too much. The attorney says there's probably no real reason for you to be there anyway. She asked if he's working on Sigfredo's case right now, and he says yes. She said, I feel like we have a time frame of everything that needs to be done right away. And he checks her right here. He's like, there's no time frame. This is going to drag out for a while. He tells her if they come and arrest her, she'll have to get her own attorney because that puts him in a conflict, and he can't represent both her and Sigfredo. He tells her he has a lawyer picked out for her if she wants, but they're going to have to come up with money for him too. He said, that's the way it works. These guys don't work for free. He said, just like me, whenever I take off, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, or whenever I have to go to Tallahassee, I'm going to need another $5,000 from you, so start working on that. He says, hopefully they get this money from Hollandale, and that'll help. Katie said that's what she's hoping, and that's her goal. He says there's no legal reason for them to hold it, but sometimes they make them jump through hoops to get it, but he said there's nobody for him to talk to that day. He said, but believe me, tomorrow I will be talking to them. She says she doesn't want him to be gone when they approach her. And he says, I'm not going to be gone. I'm here. And they're not going to approach you right now because they know you're not talking to them. They're waiting for a lawyer, whether it's me or somebody else, to call them and say, okay, she wants to talk. He said the only reason they would be approaching her right now is to arrest her. He says, I don't think they have enough to do that unless there's something they're just holding back. And of course, they're insinuating that they do. And I don't know what that would be. That's why I thought it was important to reach out to that family to see if anybody over there is talking. And we know as of right now, nobody is. So at least we don't have to worry about all that. He says to keep in touch with him. And if she needs to see him this afternoon, he's around so she can call. Katie says, thanks. That call ends. I'll be posting all of these wiretaps on my YouTube channel probably over the weekend. That way you kind of have a little bit of a heads up of what they say. But it's also important to hear the tone and everybody's voices on these phone calls because it's just not something I can convey. And there are certain calls where things get panicky a little bit nervous, and that way I'm going to make a playlist just of the wiretap calls. And I'll try to do some subtitles, transcripts, that kind of thing. 
I don't always get them perfect because it takes so much time to listen to every call. So sometimes they're hilariously wrong, but not meant to be a true transcript. But sometimes you get a giggle when things are said on there and it's not what was said. At least I do. The next call, Charlie calls the charter company to sign up. For the first year, it's $13,175. The next year, he would pay $9,000 and then he would be grandfathered in for life. And Charlie sounds stoked. He's like, how's the company doing? The agent says it's great. He's been with it for a couple of years now and it's growing super fast. Charlie asked if he'll get flight credits for joining early. The agent says, yes, you'll get those $1,500. The agent walks Charlie through how to pay through the app. Charlie mentions that a friend referred him. The agent says they'll give the friend 1,500 credits and they go through that process. This next call starts off between Charlie and Harvey, but y'all, Donna sounds like she's got three tongues fighting in her mouth and sounds like she's on another planet. She has taken something for TMJ, and I put that in air quotes because it's probably more like Sigfredo got arrested and time's a ticking. Charlie calls and gets Harvey. Charlie said he just got home, asked if Donna is sleeping. Harvey said, yeah, she's just dozing off. Charlie says she shouldn't have taken what he gave her until after the game. Harvey says, I don't think she took it. Then he says, oh, she did take it. She just gave me a nod. Charlie kind of laughs and says she was supposed to wait until after the game. Harvey says he has the game on delay so he could go past all the commercials. Charlie asks if he's watching. Harvey says, of course. And then he says, hold on. So Donna comes on the phone. I don't know what Charlie gave her, but whatever it is, it worked. She says, honey. Charlie says, yeah. She said that was a good idea of what to do. So Charlie asked if she took a quarter or a half. And Donna said a quarter. Charlie asked with a couple of sips of wine. Donna says, oh, yeah. He asked how the TMJ feels. And she said it's feeling better. He says, no clicking in the jaw, no stress. She says, no. He said, it's like magic, right? She says, yep. He asked if they're going to take care of that tomorrow. Charlie says, I'll talk to you later because he saw you in the office, right? She says, yeah. Charlie said he asked, is she still having the problem? So he saw you. He says he'll talk to him later. She asked if things went well. And Charlie says, yeah, it was fine. It was really good. Donna says, good, thank you. So I think here what's happening is Donna's asking about talking to that attorney. This is on the same day that Katie talked to Sigfredo's attorney who was told by that attorney, they're not talking. That's just kind of my theory. Donna says that she's glad to hear it went fine. She asked Charlie if he's home, and he says yes. She said it was a great game. He said it was an awesome game, so enjoy your relaxing night. Hopefully, you don't have to get up too early in the morning. Donna says if she could sleep till 7, it would be fabulous. Charlie says only do that pill when you have at least 8 hours of sleep. You'll get 8 to 9 hours every time. Donna says that would be amazing. Charlie says everything just feels so much more relaxed, doesn't it? Donna says it does, yeah. Charlie says, you don't want to do that when you're in Costa Rica because you'll see how hard it hits you with a couple of sips of alcohol. It's you big time. Donna says, right. Charlie asked what time she took it. She said about 45 minutes ago, and Charlie said, in the next 15 minutes, you'll be zoning out. Donna says, that's what's happening. Charlie says, I would just focus on getting some rest in. She thanks him for lunch and said it was really nice. Charlie says, I'm glad Jim could come with us. Donna says, I couldn't stand the thought of us going and not. We had already gone over the patient's issue and I felt bad. How could we leave from there? And I was glad we did because the more time I got to spend with her, she's lovely. Charlie says, she's incredibly sweet. I'm assuming June. Charlie says, we're just going to watch the game. I'm glad you guys got to spend some time with her. Charlie says, he loves her. They'll talk tomorrow. Says he hopes that he will see her before she leaves, but he has to look at his schedule. He doesn't know where he is from one day to the next. Donna says, if we don't see you, at least we'll talk to you. Charlie says he keeps thinking that today's Sunday, and Donna says, well, tomorrow's Tuesday. She tells him to look at his schedule so he knows where to go tomorrow. He says, there's a chance I may see you, but don't bet on it. Donna says, okay, honey, I'm around all day. I don't have to pick up the boys. Charlie says to get some rest, and there's some buzz. So we're going to go back to Katie and Sigfredo. This is the next day, May 31st. Katie says she's given their daughter a bath, but she said she jumped out, and then she's letting their daughter play in the water. Sigfredo says as far as his property, he can release everything or nothing. He can't just release his wallet. He says he'll just release everything. She said, you're closing everything? And he says, no, 
he thinks that he'll keep his clothes. He said he's worried about not having a driver's license if he gets released, but he's sure somebody will come pick him up or he'll go to family's house up there. He said he needs some information. He mentions the name Francis Magbanwa, spells out the first name, asks for the address and phone number. She asked what he's doing. He said he's playing cards right now. He said he's kicking butt. And then he said his butt is asleep from the metal chair. He said someone told him he was getting transported within the hour. Katie said, I figured that was going to happen. And then she said, let's just talk about the kids and stuff. She asked if once transport happens, he'll be able to contact her regardless. I didn't hear an answer. Katie says, uh, let me give you this number. Then she says, I already called your job, by the way. Said she called yesterday. Then she says, Nestor. And Sigfredo says, there's nobody named Nestor. It's Lester. The guy I went to the hockey game with. Katie asked if this is the guy who's always fighting with his girlfriend. She said, let me give you his number. She says that, that guy is going to put money in and Katie has to give him instructions so that he can call Sigfredo. Katie says that he's blank on her phone and it's weird. Sigfredo says he's effing starving. She asked if he's tired and he says no, starving. He said it might take him a couple of days to get up to Tallahassee and he said that's a good thing. He said they will go to Orlando and Tampa. They'll transport him with prisoners that are going to prison. So he thinks he'll stay a night in each one. Katie said, I thought it was straight up there. Sigfredo thought it was VIP, but they're not taking him VIP. He said, it's a good thing. There's no rush. They don't want to spend the money to send a four-man crew to pick me up. Sigfredo asked if one of the kids asked about him. Katie said, it's kind of weird. Maybe he's just occupied. And then she said, oh, wait. He did say, is he picking me up or something like that? At this point, Sigfredo talks to their son, Katie's in the background. Sigfredo says to listen to your mom. He asks the boy if he's taking care of his mom and his sister. He says he is. Sigfredo tells him he'll be home soon. You look at the kids that are affected by all of this. So you have Dan and Wendy's too. You have Katie and Sigfredo's too. I think Rivera maybe had a new baby at the time of the murder. Then we heard him talk about going over to give money to the mother of his other children. There was some question about where the money came from. And then, of course, Charlie's son. It's a lot of kids that are forever affected by these decisions to murder a man because he wanted to be a dad. So many living victims just all over the place. Katie says that she's managing and she talks about the kids commute to school. She said she's trying to figure out the house situation. She's going to talk to somebody named Nelson about it and get the boys to help her since she always helps everyone else. She said she really just wants the pictures and not the materialistic stuff. She said they need the money. She said she told them all she doesn't feel comfortable being there by herself anyway. Katie says the weather's been gloomy the past week. It's been rainy. She talks about windshield wipers being put on the car. She also says they may have found a home for Thunder. She says the people have sent her pictures and the animal looks sad. Sigfredo said he misses Katie like crazy and her stinky hair. She says, why do you always say my stinky hair? Sigfredo says he hasn't brushed his teeth yet. Katie says, yow, stinky mouth. Sigfredo also says he smells like onions. She asked if he got deodorant. He said, tomorrow. He said he hasn't worn deodorant for a week. Also, he hasn't shaved. He said he's requested a nurse visit. He said his gunshot wound hurts and his back hurts, so he's going to see if he can get some Benadryl so he can sleep. He said he stayed up all night the night before and only slept an hour and a half that day. Sigfredo talks about somebody he's in with who's young, has a wife and kids, the wife and this man got an armed robbery charge. Sigfredo tells her that he's in maximum security with the worst of the worst. And Katie says, oh my God, babe, prayers to you. She says she doesn't want him to be in that situation. Sigfredo asks about how his mom was. Katie said, I got upset. I don't want your mom to break down. And Katie said, your mom just gets mad at me when I'm driving. She screams at me, so I just stay quiet. Sigfredo says he gets the phone from 8 to 10 the following morning, and Katie says to call at 9 because at 8, she's still driving with the kids. She says, you don't know when you're getting transported. Sigfredo says no. He says the longer the better. Sigfredo says they have 10 days to pick him up, and if they don't come get him, they have to release him. There's I love yous, kiss the kids for me. He says to make up the story about the piggy who has to study hard. So that's it for today. Hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you soon.